Hey crafters, happy new year. It is 2021 and I want to start this year the same way I've started the past few years by looking at the craft goals I made and seeing how well I did. So at the beginning of 2020, I made a video and I outlined 11 and a half things that I wanted to work on during 2020, things that I would either talk about on my channel or show on my channel. And I got some of that done, but not nearly as much as I thought. I mean, between working a full-time job and homeschooling two out of three kids, I didn't get that much crafting done, which is crazy because I, as well as you, we have spent more time in our house this past year than I think we ever have yet. I, crafting just didn't happen. So I'm going to go over the things I talked to you about last year. We'll rate how terribly I did. Um, I failed. I failed. And then this will be part one. Part two, I will talk a bit about the things I want to complete in 2021. So let's get started. Number one on my 2020 priority list was my Star Wars scarf. Let me show it to you. Crinkling. The Star Wars scarf has been my longest work in progress. This was started shortly after I learned to knit. For some reason, I went from learning knit, knit stitch, purl stitch, and jumped deep, deep into double-sided knitting. I love double-sided knitting. I really like the look that it gives your product, your item. The problem is the more I'm knitting and the older I'm getting, I'm experiencing a lot of pain here in my hands when I craft. And when, oh wow, <laughs> does she have favorite colors? Maybe she does. <laughs> gray, gray, black, and white. As I'm double-sided knitting, I feel like I'm holding onto my work at a weirder angle since I've got the two yards. I feel like I'm squeezing my needles harder and it's putting so much pressure on my hands. Now, regular standard knitting, I don't feel this way, but for some reason it's only double-sided knitting. So it's one of these things I work on for a few rows, I put it away, and then six months pass. This is actually a gift for my husband. I think I started this in 2015. It is unacceptable, it's not done yet. It's my longest work in progress. And I think it was the day after Christmas, my husband said to me like, hey, I'd really love if you got that scarf as a Christmas gift next year. I love that scarf, it would be great if you could complete it. And it's like, I agree. Um, this was on my list last year and I didn't get it. I made a, a little bit of progress working on some rows, but unfortunately, this was a fail. And if you watch part two, you're gonna see it again because I'm gonna talk about how it's on my list for this year. The Star Wars diamond painting, I didn't get to at all. It is still in this cabinet next to the night sky diamond painting. It just didn't happen. I ended up finding a lot of other diamond paintings that I loved. I bought them, villains, uh, the nativity scene. Um, I think that one's really cool because it's of a Star Wars ship. I think it's an X-Wing, another gift that I thought my husband would really like, but it's about 80% 310 drills. So I'm gonna have to be in quite, quite the focused creative mode since it is a mostly black diamond painting. I didn't even start. Three, my knit shawl, which I did start. Um, it counts as starting. I'll show you what I did. This one is from the Tell Me About Your Rhinebeck Sweater by Christy Glass Knits uh, YouTube video. Once a year she goes to Rhinebeck, a huge knitting classes and art and fabric um, yarn sales. One of the women in the video who was talking about her sweater also mentioned this wrap she had on, this shawl. I thought it was beautiful. I bought the pattern immediately. It's Harry Potter themed. I started it. This was a lockdown project, but I just, I didn't make much progress at all. I literally finished the tiny little wing of a corner. Um, the first 
This is supposed to be like little uh, tree branches. The first tree branch is done. I need to work on this. I love it and the yarn is so soft. I just, it, it didn't happen. My biggest problem with this, oh, I have a little cupcake stitch mark, was that being with the kids in the house, I would lose my place, lose my count. I restarted this twice to get this here and it reached a point where this was labeled a after bedtime only project and I just, it didn't get any progress. So, so far I'm on, I'm starting number four. I haven't completed any of them. I did make progress on two of the three. So maybe I should count things I started to help my percentage, but I've completely failed my goals. Number four, the Christmas cross stitch. This one had a lot of progress done on it. I actually would take this on trips with us over the summer when we will pop up to Bonn about um, an hour and a half, two hours away, work on it in the hotel room. Um, I did get a good portion of it done, or not done, but uh, started. Sorry guys, I, I'm not gonna get on the video. I got the gold and the decorative pieces down here, started work on the candles, another set of candles just didn't finish it. And it was actually when I got my villain's diamond painting that this just literally, I like smacked it off my table and got so back invested in kind of some diamond painting at the moment. I just set this aside pretty early summer. So here's a good one, number five. The night sky diamond painting. I actually finished it. <laughs> We're at five on the list and it's something that I actually completed. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> um, oh, <laughs> and if you're watching those videos, I completed this painting because literally it had been more than a year and I did not like the painting at all. And I told myself, I'm just gonna finish. I'm just gonna do this. And I spent the last couple weeks that I was working on it like angry diamond painting because I just wanted it done. I wanted to complete it. Um, it was something that one of my girls picked out that she really liked and the same color drill of that purple blue over and over and over, I just felt like I was staring at paint drying basically because there was no change in color, there was no difference. It was the same thing over and over and over. And one of the great things about diamond painting is those bright, beautiful colors that keeps it interesting. It's nice to look at and this one I just did not enjoy but it's done. That counts, that counts. The next one is a set of diamond painting um, items too. Let me get them. Oh, they're not all undone. These are, these are undone. Um, the superheroes, the mini superhero diamond paintings completed these. These were really fun. They're, I dropped it. These are really fun because they're small and I could complete one in less than 30 minutes. And actually the ones that I did um, were worked on with my kids. So if I was diamond painting kind of by myself and I had all the colors just lined up in trays, this would be a 15 minute project. But the fact that I was using one tray with my kids and then switching drills was about 30 minutes and it was fun. It was so simple that I did it with my kids. And at one point, some of the other characters, the reason why I don't have all of them here, some of the other characters, as they had a friend come over, I would then let them pick a character out and we would all diamond paint together. So that's another really cool, fun thing that we did. This one is done. The um, seven on my list, the plastic canvas Christmas angels is another thing that has stayed in this closet. Uh, it didn't even come out. I didn't look at it. I didn't even think about it this year. So that is a big like X, did not complete. Also, I reference this closet a lot. Um, when I first moved here to Germany and when I first kind of started throwing stuff in this room as a craft place, that, uh, that closet to the right of the night sky is where I put everything I thought, um, my work in progress, this is what I want to tackle. So the things that I picked out that I wanted to work on this year, ended up in that closet. So that is why I keep referencing it. 
My Axel diamond painting, no, I'm sorry. I didn't get one of his diamond paintings done. I have three of him, one is complete, two more I need to work on. The Star Wars diamond painting set, that was a Christmas gift last year. I didn't make very much progress on it, so I didn't even bring it out, but it's one of those cool ones. It's a kit that you see on Amazon. It had Yoda and I think either Darth Vader or Kylo Ren. I don't remember off the top of my head, but I got it as a gift for Christmas and that's the kind of thing my kids would really love. It's also small. That's important because me personally, I pick these huge diamond paintings because I like the detail, but then it's difficult to work with. It's just, it's huge. I either need to work on it up here, um, maybe like outlining and stuff. I could take downstairs and work while my kids are playing, but you can't really move around something that big. You have a spot for it and that's where you work on it. But those Star Wars diamond paintings were smaller and I should have given more time to that because I, that, it, I mean, if it's like this size, it's easy to just take your canvas and your one little box of drills on the go with you. And I should have done that now that I'm thinking of it. <sighs> 10, the Hobby Lobby baby blanket. I did terrible with that, <laughs> crinkling. So in the summer of 2019, we had our home leave. I spent 11 weeks in the United States and it was wonderful. When we went out to Colorado, I got to visit my first Hobby Lobby. I can't believe what I was missing. There is There was not one in Northern Virginia until the year I moved. The year I moved overseas, all of a sudden, there's a Hobby Lobby down in Woodbridge at Potomac Mills, which for me, 30, 45 minutes in the car driving to a craft store, totally manageable in Northern Virginia. 30 minutes in the car could be going down the street with how bad traffic is. Um, so I didn't have one near me, so I never went. And, and home leave, I went. I loved this. This was originally, the original tag is on it. It was $70 at Hobby Lobby. And I don't know if they're like Michael's where they have like coupons and things you should look out for. It was on clearance for $18. For $18, I'll buy it. And it was this just pre-printed blanket. I did some pretty good progress. I organized all of my threads. I got started and then um, I had a baby in mind. This was gonna be the gift for her and it just took way too long. This was probably about a month worth of this being my main dominant craft what I'm working on that was a month and um, I'm just too slow in embroidery the other Christmas one working on it here or there I think having a big project like this of embroidery it would just consume me so I didn't work on it this was a huge fail finally we're at something that I completed. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> it took this long. So Axel's actually on it. So I'm gonna like kind of tug it a little bit. The Christmas placemats. I'm gonna grab one, okay? Of course, they're all the way at the bottom. Thank you. These are the Christmas placemats. They are so as you go, quilt as you go. Um, I really enjoyed it. I loved this method. <laughs> Being a new quilter, something easy, and um, the fact that it's supposed to be messy and not lined up and uneven, and it's just, you go with it, go with the flow. I really liked this style. I did six of these. So there's five of us and then one extra one. I didn't want to make just five. Uh, oh, well, light bulb um so I made six of these for myself and then I made a set of four for my sister she has a young son who's actually the same age as my son we delivered about four months apart and I thought my kids think these are really cute he'll probably think these are really cute so not only did I finish my own set of placemats I made a second set of placemats so even though that wasn't on my 2020 list that should count twice. <laughs> it should. <laughs>
help me out, it should. And then <laughs> Axel's kind of taken over them. I'm not, sh I, I don't want to woo them. <laughs> but I mentioned in my 2020 video, I love to make quilts for my kids. And I did that. Surprisingly, the summer and the fall of 2020, anytime I had a moment to sneak away, I made these quilts. Do you mind if I pick it up? You look so cute. What if I let you stay in my lap? Okay. <sighs> I think we came up with a solution. A soft pillow, and I got three quilts. I think it's all good. Um, so I made each of my kids a quilt. I don't know why one of the big things with me is I want my kids to be like snuggled up and cuddled and warm and we sit on the couch and we watch movies together and for me a blanket is kind of part of this ritual of us together cuddled up. They're, they're young and they're not going to want to do this with mom and watch Muppet Babies with mom all the time. So I guess that's why blankets were important to me to focus on for this year. And I actually did it. Um, when I finished one, I was like, oh my gosh, I did it, I made one. They both picked, well, I, I saw this Emily Dennis pattern that I really loved, um, Scrappy Quilty Hearts. They both really liked it and I made it. So, you know, it's half square triangles. Oh, she's already spilled stuff on hers. Whoops. Half square triangles and different pieces of fabric. I think I did a video about these. They picked out a good portion of the fabric on their quilts. A lot of it has meaning. Some of the fabric is in both of their quilts because I wanted to just symbolize the twins and together. And they don't pick up on that, but I do. Here's the purple version. And since they got quilts for their birthday, the little boy got a quilt for his. Now, I did his start to finish in about 12 days. And um, that does not include cutting. So I should probably say that. Oh. <laughs> He's, the little boy is downstairs yelling. They're playing chess. I hear him be like, so, I don't know, maybe he won, maybe he don't. Um, and not including the cutting, it is just all scrappy squares of the things he loves the most. Buses, cars, police cars, ambulances, construction equipment. Just super cool for a little boy. And the inside has construction fleece on it. And he got moved to a big boy bed for Christmas. So... He's got that quilt and it stays with him every night. So that was my list for 2020. This is part one. I didn't do so great. In fact, um, let me do some math. I'm counting the placemats as two. <laughs> so actually, it's not that bad. Let's see, for... 36%. So I got 36% of my my list done. And when you hear that, yeah, it is pretty bad. So I failed. I definitely failed. I didn't even hit 50%. But if you count the things that I started, yeah, it's still failing. <laughs> it's still failing. So 2020, I failed. But um, this is part one after for part two. I'm going to talk about the things that I want to do in 2021. And now I have that goal. I need to do better than 36%. So stick around. Tomorrow I'm going to upload part two and I will talk to you soon. Bye crafters.